Good morning to you. It's Friday. We continue to look at the events of Pentecost as recorded in Luke's, uh, uh, the, sorry, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, uh, from verse 40 to 42 today. And with many other words, he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. So then those who had received his word were baptized, and that day there were added about 3,000 souls. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Wow. From one sermon on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls were added to the kingdom of God. About 3,000 people responded to the message that they need to save themselves from this perverse generation, that they need to turn from their sins, to repent, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour. They did, they were baptised, and the Christian church was founded. It had begun. It began with tongues of fire, and that fire has never gone out. The church has been persecuted throughout the centuries. People have tried to wipe it out. It still stands today. And we are thankful to God that it's His church, it's His Word, and wherever His Word is, it abides. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the Word of God will abide forever. The message that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost is the same message today. Nothing's changed. We need to save ourselves from this perverse generation. We need to turn to the living God. There is only one way to Him, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. For only the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ can cleanse us from our sin. And it's only faith in Him when we acknowledge our sin, repent of our sin, and trust in Him as our Savior, and are baptized, are we saved. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The gospel has always been the same, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. That message has always been the same, it will never change, and the good news is that if we do come to him, he will never ever reject us. As we've considered before, the one prayer that God will always answer if we pray it from our heart is, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, because God has already been merciful to us by sending Jesus to take our punishment, to die in our place. And through belief in him, we are saved. Notice that the Christians then stuck together. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the word of God and to fellowship. They came together regularly for worship. And they came together breaking bread and spending time in prayer. The main thing is they stuck together. They were united. And that is where the strength was. That's what we need today. And we need to continue to have fellowship with our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we so thank you for your word. We thank you for a new day. We thank you that we can begin each day with you. Begin each day by opening your word and reading about what you do and what you have promised and what you have given to us. Lord, it's so wonderful to start each day with you, to set our minds on the right direction as we head out for the day. So today as we head out, Lord, we ask that you take us by the hand and lead us, that you guide us, shape us, mold us. Use us, Lord, to be your light. Help us to seek out fellowship with brothers and sisters and help us to encourage one another, to strengthen one another, especially in these times when, again, your church is being persecuted more and more. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to stay true to your word to devote ourselves to your word, to devote ourselves to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, to prayer. Heavenly Father, we need your help and we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We pray that you would, Lord, just empower us. May our light shine brightly and may our lives always be a great testimony to your love and to your power and to life in you. We pray for those who do not know you yet, Lord, and we pray that today would be the day that many would turn to you we are just amazed that 3,000 people on the day of Pentecost from one sermon, Lord, repented and came to you and were baptized and the church was born. We pray for that type of revival again. We pray, Lord, that many, many would come to know you. So many people are out there chasing after everything but you. Lord, would you turn them around and bring them to yourself. Heavenly Father, we pray for our government. We pray for all in authority. We pray that you give them wisdom and these very strange times that we're living in that you would help them to navigate through and to make good and right decisions and the things that they do. We pray, Lord, for 
an end to the war in the Ukraine. We pray that you would have mercy. We lift up before you the sick, the dying, the lonely, the poor, the widow, the orphan. We lift up before you, Lord, those who find themselves in very difficult times. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to be generous and help us to use the resources that you've given to us wisely and faithfully. We commend to you, Lord, our loved ones near and far and ask that you would protect us all from evil. Help us today to be the best version of ourselves that we can possibly be. And hear us now as we join together in praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you all tomorrow.